When I first started with ESP8266 some years ago, the only solution that you had for programming was the ESP IDF. And that was pretty challenging to install on Windows or indeed on Linux. However, in the last few years, it's become much, much easier. And uh, what I'd like to show you in the next few minutes is just how easy it's become to get started with ESP IDF. So to get, get on the right page to start with, all you need to do is Google ESB IDF and here we go. We will have um, the IDF come up. Best uh, place to start is here. So uh, we'll click on that and we come and you get a full explanation of what's what and where it's where, uh, including, and don't forget, the um, there are all kinds of other frameworks and libraries to play with, and one of my upcoming videos will soon be on the ESP Rainmaker, which is a joy to work with. However, for today, the Get Starting Guide is uh, where we're going to start, and um, we're going to do it on Windows today because um, I'm guessing that's the, uh, the best way uh, or the, the one that most of you will be using. So we scroll down to installing the prerequisites for Windows and it's very, very straightforward. We download the, uh, the installer, the tools installer, and I've already got that um, installed. If I can find it. And in fact, it's on uh, issue 2.4 now. Accept the agreement and it will start. It will check certificates, checking Windows Defender, the check complete, hit next. We're going to have um, Git installed, version 2.30. And we're going to download the ESP IDDF. And I am going to install the master development branch uh, because uh, we'll be doing some work with the uh, ESP Rainmaker and the ESP uh, 32C3, which is brand new and only supported in that branch. So where are we going to put it? Um, in Expressive. Install. And it's very, very straightforward. Very, very quick. Now, while you're waiting, uh, if you want to keep uh, keep up to date with the rest of the projects that I'll be doing, then uh, it's now's a good time to uh, give it a like if you think it's worthwhile, and to subscribe um, to keep up to date. Okay, just about to finish. We'll run the command prompt, and we'll unclick that in case uh, Windows Defender has a hiccup and we'll finish that. And to be honest, there's not that much to do here. Just look and see if there are any, anything to do for this particular example, which there isn't. So we'll just hit quit. Okay, idf.py. Just set the target. ESP32C3.
Okay, now we can go IDF py.build. Nine hundred and fifty things to do. It doesn't take too long. First time, a bit slow. Second time, after it's all built, uh, it's only the changes that get compiled, so uh, it's pretty fast. Done. Okay. So now I let's upload it. IDF.py minus P. My device is on COM4. And we're going to flash and then monitor. There it is running. It's an ESP32 C3 with one core, Wi Fi, Bluetooth, Silicon Revision 3, uh, 2 rather, 2 megabytes of external flash, it says. That's because I should have um, set that in menu config. So let's do that. To get out of monitor, you need control and the right square bracket. Let's go back to menu config and I'll show you where I went wrong. Okay, we want the... Um, what do we want? It's in here somewhere. There we are. It says flash size 2. It's actually 4 megabytes. Alright, so we'll hit quit save build rerun cmake configures much quicker this time Flash monitor. And now you can see one core Wi Fi Bluetooth revision two, four megabytes of flash. So that's it, end to end ESP IDF. Don't forget to please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.